What's up my friends? Today I want to share with you uh, a simple way to connect the DS18B20 and the DHT11 sensor to your Arduino and display them on an OLED screen. Sounds like it might be kind of complicated for a beginner, but I will break it down. It's actually very simple and uh, after this tutorial you should be able to get started and start editing and playing around with the code to get things exactly how you want. So. Before we go over to the workbench, let me just show you what the finished product looks like. This, well, this won't be the finished product. It doesn't have a case or anything on it. But uh, the OLED display has patch, which is the name of my snake. The spot temperature, which is the temperature of his heat pad. And then you have the ambient temperature and the percent humidity or the ambient humidity. Um, and that is a little 1 inch or 0.96 inch OLED screen. Uses the SSD1306 driver, I believe. And uh, it is an I squared C model. We also have connected the DHT11 and the DS18B20 with its pull up resistor. The DHT11 uh, has a pull up resistor on the breakup board already, um, but the, D or the DSB1820 does not. I didn't have a breakout board for it, so I had to put the pull-up resistor on there myself. So, without any more delay, let me show you how to hook these up, and we'll jump over to the workbench. So what we've got here is a bit of a rat's nest, honestly, but the OLED screen is connected to the I2C uh, pins on the Arduino Pro Micro. Uh, the DHT11 is plugged into pin 15, and the DS18B20 is plugged into pin six. Now, each one needs power. We're going to hook that up to five volts on each one, and DS18B20 needs a pull-up resistor. I used a 4.7K. Now, I know this isn't very easy to follow, so I'm going to roll in a picture that I made uh, just so you could uh, reference that instead of this. It'll be a lot easier. It's exactly how I uh, hooked everything up, so um, check that out. And so now let's look at the code that you need to get this up and running. Before we do anything else, we need to get the proper libraries. So let's go to manage libraries and I'll show you which ones you need to download uh, to get the program working the way that I have here. Uh, we're going to search uh, SSD1306. That is the driver for the OLED screen. It's mostly um, most of the, most of the screens that you get on like Amazon or eBay that are that form factor. They're the 128 by 64 I2C screen. Uh, it's this one, the Adafruit SSD 1306. That's what most of those use. Um, it also supports a couple different sizes, but we have the 128 by 64. So we're going to install that. I already have it installed. I think it asks you to install a few other libraries. It'll do that automatically. Just say OK. Uh, then we need a DS18B20 library. And the one I use is this one. Uh, it was by far the most user friendly and it was easiest to follow on the examples and so that's the one I used. So install DS18B20 by Matthias, Matthias Monk Hansen. Uh, and then last but not least, we need the DHT11. And it is this DHT sensor library by Adafruit. So install that and we're good to go. Now, I do not like using the include library function. I have found that for some reason, the way it includes libraries sometimes does not work. Uh, don't know why. It just expresses the, the code incorrectly. So I always go to examples and copy and paste out of the examples. So for the SSD 1306, we have the SSD 1306, 128 by 64, I squared C. That brings this up with a ton of code that we just absolutely do not need 
99% of it. It's And they don't even have an example where it's just like, hey, this is how to put text on there. You have to go through all this and pull it out. But I've done that for us. So what we need are these lines here. And just copying it off of this is going to be much easier than looking through that example. Trust me. Um, I will also put this code on GitHub so you can just download it right to your computer. Uh, this is what we need. The screen width, screen height, 64, and OLED reset, pin 5. Just use a pin that you're not using for anything else. Um, Steve 1306, that's just initiating the object. Um, in setup, you will need the code. Um, this right here, this is also out of that Adafruit example. Uh, in the Adafruit example, the I squared C address is 0x3d. You probably will need to change that to C. Um, but try one of those codes. Chances are one of those are the correct address. Um, this is just an exception handle, uh, just letting you know it failed. And that is all you need to do to initiate the OLED screen. So next, let's go ahead and do the DHT11. Um, we use the DHT sensor library for that right here, the DHT tester. Boop. And out of all this code, what you will need, I've already done this as well because I had to test everything, is this right here. Uh, this just declares the type of DHT sensor you're using, what pin it's on, uh, well, imports the library first, and then it initializes the instance of the DHT sensor. Um, so that's all you need to initialize this. Uh, on my example, it is plugged into pin 15, but you can change that to whatever pin you'd uh, like to use. And then last but not least, the DS18B20. And we are using the DS18B20 library. Uh, I don't remember what example I used. I think I might have used the multiple so it would just detect the address. Because each one of those sensors, since it's all the communication is done over one wire, uh, it has to get the address of the sensor to then use that address. So out of this example, uh, what I copied to initialize the DS18 B20. God, that is a not a mouthful, but it's just a lot of letters and numbers together. Um, was this? This initializes it. Almost forgot to include the library. Include DS18 B20.h, DS18 B20 DS6. That tells it what pin it's on. Again, I believe. You can use any digital pin you want, uh, but sometimes uh, one wire protocol can only be utilized on uh, one pin. So whatever Arduino you're look or you're using, be sure to check on that. Uh, for the Pro Micro, I used pin six, and that's all you need to do before the setup. After the setup, oh, we need to balance our curly brackets there. Okay. This code is just to display the number of DS devices. And then we are going to initialize our DHT. And then in the loop is where we actually start reading and writing uh, from the sensors to the OLED screen. So what you do uh, before you display anything is you clear the display. And that will just make sure there's no artifacts left over from a previous command or anything. Uh, you can set your text size and the text color. Um, I am setting it to uh, the white, but this is a yellow and blue uh, display, so I'm not sure um, why you need this in here, but 
it will just display on whatever color the OLED screen is. Um, I wonder if you could leave that out. Let's try leaving that out. I don't know if that will make a difference. Um, but then you set the cursor location, which is just uh, where it starts drawing on the screen. I think the top left is zero, zero. So we're setting the cursor at zero, zero. Uh, and then we display print patch or whatever you want that top line to be. Then we're going to change the text size back to one because we want those to uh, the next the information to be a little smaller. You can leave it as two if you're not trying to display as much data and you just want the words to be bigger. Um, but for mine, I reset it back to one. And then this next part is setting the cursor size. You have to move it down uh, or you're just gonna write over patch in this case or whatever you have on that first line. So I moved it down 20 pixels and then I'm printing uh, ds dot get temp f open close parentheses and then that will get the temperature in Fahrenheit so it prints that and then I'm moving the cursor to the right 40 pixels and I'm staying on the same height at 20 pixels and then it is a print command spot temperature uh, and so it will put spot temp after that get temp f command is printed. So then next one, we're going to move back to the left side of the screen and move down 10 pixels. Display dot print dht dot read temperature true. Uh, that true gets it in Fahrenheit. Um, you can look at the example to get more information on how that works. Um, but it's going to print that. And again, we're going to move over uh, 40 pixels and display Boop. ambient temperature, since that's just the temperature of the air from the DS, DHT11 temperature. So just the ambient temperature. The next one, we're going to move down another 10 pixels and back to the left side of the screen at 040. So zero is the x-axis and 40 is the y-axis if you haven't figured that out yet. We're going to dht.readhumidity, open close parentheses, and that's just going to print. And then we are going to move over to the right 40 pixels again at the same uh, y-axis, uh, same row. Uh, but we're gonna move over to the right 40 pixels and print percent humidity. So I'm going to install this on the Pro Micro board. And 13 Leonardo. It comes up as Leonardo because it's a 32U4 microchip, uh, but it's the Pro Micro footprint. So I took out this SSD 1306 white because it's not a white OLED, it's a yellow and blue. Um, and so I'm curious. Oh, um, I'm just gonna save that on the desktop because I have a different program uh, that I'm running this with and I don't need to save this one. This one is just for demonstration purposes. Oh, I didn't add display. I bet that's it. I'm only gonna delay it one second instead on this one. I bet that's it. Okay, let's let's try that now. Uploading. Okay, so it's not displaying at all right now. So I'm curious if that is due to the set text color. Maybe there's no default value that it takes on and you have to declare that. So let's, whoop. 
Let's hold the DS18B20 and see if the temperature goes up. All right, cool, cool, looks like it's working. All right, now let's breathe on the DHT11 sensor, see if the humidity goes up. Did it go up? Oh, looks like it. Yep. All right. There's a little bit of lag for the humidity, but that's definitely fast enough for, uh, like, if you're measuring the environment for plants or reptiles or whatever, a few seconds lag isn't going to be a big deal. But glad we got that working. Uh, I want to share with you just a little bit of, uh, you know, just because I'm making the tutorial doesn't mean I run don't run into problems for sure. Um, so it turns out you do have to display dot set text color. Um, just throw white in there. I guess it doesn't really make a difference because it is a uh, fixed color display. Um, clear display. Don't forget the display dot display command at the end. Uh, <laughs> and then delay 1000 or that's in milliseconds. So if you want to delay one second or update every five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope it helps you out. If you have any problems, please let me know in the comments. Um, tell me more than just it doesn't work. Like, okay, I can't really, <laughs> I can't really help you if I don't get any, you know, more data. Uh, but if you have a specific question or a problem, please let me know. I would be more than happy to do my best to help. Um, but I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you're going to use this for. I'd love to find out. Be kind to someone today, and I will see you next time. Peace. So, I'm waiting for my recorder to turn on. Let's see what the difference is between the onboard audio for the ESR and what using an H4N Pro Zoom recorder with a SDPC-2 microphone. These are one of those microphones that are, it's like a hundred bucks for two of them. And it, like, I heard someone say you should give it a try. And I was like, two microphones for a hundred dollars. I can't imagine they're that good. But surprisingly, they are a very large improvement over onboard audio. Or it's not surprising that it's, that big of an, it's not that surprising that it is an improvement, but it is surprising how big the improvement is. And these microphones seem like they're very high quality for the price point. I would not expect a $50 microphone to be this good. And it comes with several different condenser heads. Like you have cardioid, super cardioid, and hypercardioid for each one. So it's like two whole sets. It's crazy. Uh, link down in the description. But here's the onboard audio. And here's the audio from the microphone. So that's just a little Easter egg for you for those of you that stayed until this part of the video. So there you go. If you need a microphone and you don't want to spend a lot of money, these are really good. Okay.